Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, we're going to look at how good did Gardner Minshew play against the Titans Thursday night football. Everybody's excited about him. What's the performance? Such a good job throwing the ball down the field. Big plays, exciting Jacksonville stuff. Pretty rare for the last few years. So this is going to be exciting. We're going to see exactly what the film says. How good did he play? Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. All right, QB School, we're going to look at Gardner Minshew. Three plays, three big plays. Yes, I know it's only three plays. It's not a huge sample size, but I think it's going to kind of show some of the things that he does really well, some of the things that Jacksonville did really well Thursday night, and then some some scheme things, and then we'll also dive into the nuanced details of footwork from the quarterback position, accuracy, and then scheme down the field concepts. So let's dive into it. First one up, just off a turnover here, two minutes into the game, we're going to get an opportunity here to just take a great shot, really. This is a great play design. Really nice from the TV copy. We're able to see just a, it looks like a tight end pop pass. Really nice job. You know, it looks like they schemed him open. Great job, play action fake. Well, in reality, when we get into the all 22 here, this is a run play. This is straight up a run play with an option or an alert. And this is not a legal play. I'll show some linemen downfield, blocking downfield. This is ISO week. And all I mean is, so when he comes out here, this is just ISO week. So we're blocking, the fullback is blocking the will, and we're coming right out the gate. Right here's the will, fullback right here, he's coming up, blocking him. The center is coming up, blocking the mic right here. So for the quarterback-wise, that's the play. We're running ISO week. But if we get a perfect look, meaning man-to-man, -man, where our tight end right here is going to come out and block the guy who has him man to man and is going to engage him. He's then going to slip off and run this little Y slip or Y pop. And if you get that as a quarterback, you throw it. So it's a run play with one pitcher look and they get the pitcher look here right off the bat. First down inside the tight red zone. So again, great play calling illegal play. Okay. Now it's on the referees to call it, but this is illegal. There's no doubt about it. You don't get to block into the goal line eight yards down the field and throw a pass play. That's why these guys are so excited. Everyone else is kind of like, well, I thought it was a run play. Again, we got guys blocking all the way down the field. Wide receivers blocking in the end zone. Centers in the end zone. So great play design. Again, watch it right here. We're blocking 55 with the fullback, 54 with the center. You see him. He's track. He, they're tracking him. They're going downfield, run blocking, driving. He's trying to drive block him. He's in the end zone. The center is in the end zone. Okay? Doesn't take anything away from the, the call, the play, the design, the execution from the quarterback perspective. Gardner Minshew, great job. But that's not legal. So it's going to be hard to live in a world where you're running illegal plays the whole season or a long time. That's what makes me nervous when I start seeing those type of plays with how, how we're creating touchdowns. It's going to be difficult to replicate that. This is a one-on-one -on -one go route. That's really what we're looking at here. It's a beautiful throw. Aikman loved it on the on the script. To me, it's a little underthrown. I know that, you know, all these balls that are like back shoulder tweeners. Is it in the bucket? Did he give his guy a chance? He absolutely does a nice job giving his guys a chance on the outside. It is, it's a skill. But this is just a go route. It's third and nine. Middle field closed. Bump, man. Again, Titans not disguising it. And this is just one-on-one, -on -one giving your guy a chance to make a play. I mean, that's good coverage. It's a good ball. The things that I really like from the quarterback perspective, people who watch this channel will hear me say this all the time. I'll look at it from the top. But his footwork at the end, no hitch, and that's beautiful footwork at the top. He's ready to throw. His feet are set in the ground, apart, beautiful platform, balanced, and throws a strike down the field. But when he lets this thing go, I mean... It's just double go scheme wise. This is just double go. Like every team in the country at just about every level runs this concept where we're going to run go routes on both sides. And then at what is usually a middle field read. So he's going to come up. If there's somebody in the middle of the field, he's going to run an in route, an in route. If there's two safeties back here, he's going to run. This receiver is going to run a post route. It's just a middle field read. So he gets middle field close. He's running it in, but that's it. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. So again, his guys are making plays. He's making a nice throw, love the footwork, but it's hard to live in a world where good coverage, throwing it up, letting your guys make plays. 
to me, this is uh, this is mildly underthrown. This ball should, if this ball is in the back five, as opposed to the front five, he runs under that, and makes a nice easier catch. This is this guy just making a great play, wide receiver. It's good coverage, better job with the wide receiver, but nice job by Gardner giving him a chance to make a play. But again, scheme wise, go route. You know, good coverage. I think I really like the footwork is probably my favorite part. I'd like to see a hitch here to get a little bit more on it. But if you're not going to hitch, this footwork at the top, all look at his cleats, all that back foot in the ground, level platform, able to throw a strike down the field. And again, this is a push off. Okay. This, you're not going to be able to push people off in the back, right? There, that's a push off. That creates just that little space and takes the timing away from the DB. He's, you get pushed in the back, you're not going to be able to react and get, make that ball. That's a push 100%. So two touchdowns, two penalties. Tough to live in that world. It's just, it's going to be tough to replicate that type of stuff. So now, love this play call. Again, double go right out the gate, right after halftime. First play coming out, second half. Again, footwork wise, a little bit of a push here. I don't love the heel click, but again, he's moving. He's feeling that pressure moving into a throwing lane, which is fine, which I like that feel in the pocket. But again, they, they said that this was a back shoulder throw on TV. And, and I'm just not convinced it is. This is a deep down the field back shoulder throw. This just feels like an underthrown go. Now, if it is a back shoulder throw and he's doing this on purpose, bro, you're really good. Really good. But usually back shoulder throws don't happen 30 yards down the field. That's what, I, that's what makes me nervous about it. Usually those things happen a little bit closer to 25, 20, and the ball's a little bit more on a line. That just looks like a poorly thrown deep ball where his guy goes up and makes a play. Now we'll see from the all 22 here that there's even more involved in this again. But again, this just, that's good coverage. He's running with him. That's a push. That's a push in the back. Look, 33 sees it right here. That's a push in the back. And then what I mean by that is 33 right here. My man sees it. This guy doesn't see it though. Actually, <laughs> I recognize that ref. That's funny. Uh, so again, that's a push in the back, straight up. Now, are you going to be able to live in the world where all you do is throw go routes and get pushed in the back? You know, for touchdowns, big plays. This is again to me. This is a penalty. Now, it's not severe. Now, I don't know if that would ever get called, but that's definitely a hand in the back. Like it's just hard to live in that world. 33 sees it. There it is. Push. Creating that space. Even if it's subtle. It's still. It's just not that I expect it to be called here. I think it should come back. But it's just going to be hard to be successful. Having every big play you have be essentially a penalty or pass interference. Or an illegal formation or illegal guys downfield. Hard to replicate. Again, this is just double go from the all 22. It can't be simpler than this. Double go with that middle field read by the number two. He's going to run. You see the middle field close. He's going to run it in. And there's no winners out there. The Titans are right there. This is just these guys going up making plays. Now, I love the fact that Gardner's given his guys a chance to go up and make a play. But again, it's hard to play quarterback in the NFL. It's even harder when your guys aren't open. And it's even harder when every time you throw a big play, your guy has to go up and make a pass interference, essentially, to make the play. So it's going to be really hard. I think that's the thing for me watching the film, watching Thursday night, where I was like, you know, I just don't know how replicable this is like how much of this can we repeat on a weekly basis it's going to look like to me that he's going to struggle to be able to create these type of plays on a weekly basis to get those kind of calls or non-calls or trick them ups or you know illegal guys downfield it's hard to replicate it but i do think that there's some great stuff he's really good in the pocket looks polished well coached kisa has a great strong base you know i think some throws don't probably coming from someone who didn't have the strongest arm in the world looks like someone who doesn't have the strongest arm in the world but again he gets away with it not gets away with it he functions because he's so good with his base and he gives his guys a chance and he throws a catchable ball but again all those things tethered with the fact that these guys just aren't open you know you you can't throw you can't live throwing deep balls to covered guys very long in the nfl they're they're going to get a beat on it and you can't just run double go like that's mini camp one installation. So I'm going to see more from what the Jacksonville can do schematically with him. And then we need to see him kind of 
throw a, get a couple balls that are just pinpoint accuracy. Not It's not good enough to just give your guy a chance. Yeah, great job giving your guy a chance. But they're not always going to make those plays. So we need to scheme some guys open, and then we need to throw some guys open. And so that back shoulder throw, that last one, if that was a back shoulder, great. Keep doing that. That's that's elite stuff 30 yards down the field. Elite. But everything else, I'll, I'll, I gotta, we got to see some development here. I think it's it's exciting to have a guy go out there and make plays and give their guys a chance. It's just hard to string those type of performances together. And again, that's the difference between an elite guy, a starter, a guy who started for a long time. They're consistent. They're knocking it out of the park every single week, every day in practice. Where I'm telling you right now, that performance is going to be really hard to replicate with those type of throws and that type of scheme with that type of execution. So thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Got this little button right here. Pretty excited about the watermark. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for supporting the channel, watching the show. Have a good one.